Mm. All right. Welcome to the Split Screen Gaming Podcast. Occasionally weekly, we do this podcast, and sometimes we wrap it. This is the first time in 36 episodes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, I don't think anyone 11, ever 16, like, 17, counts it a wrap. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, At least to that extent. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. <laughs> That's a 36th episode of this show. Welcome, everyone. I'm Chad Michael Linus. Hi, I'm Holden. And this is Mine, our show, where we talk about so video until, games. I didn't intend, when I so started much, that, I didn't intend to count all the way up to 36, but then I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep yeah, going with it. That's a good Just joke. like most rappers. Most rappers want to at least count to 100 <laughs> in all of their raps. Most rappers love counting. Little known fact about rappers. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, we got a good one. You know why? I'm eating trail mix on the air. That's a great, so that's great thing to do. Um, You're wearing your little ski hat right now because it's cold in Chicago right now. No, mostly because I shaved off my mohawk and I hate my buzzed head, but that's what you got to do to get rid of the mohawk. Hey, I have buzzed head all the time. Are you making fun of me for having a buzzed head? No, you don't have a buzzed head. What are you talking about? It's short. I just I, I just have very thick hair. So if I, sh- like, shave my head, it still looks like a head of hair. Hair head. Hair head. <laughs> We're also going to have a great episode because I just like, got this You got hair in your head. Ooh, you got a Bowser. You got a Bowser in me, but help me locate those Ooh. purple coins. There are some that are devilishly well hidden. Devilishly well hidden. Devilishly Who well are hidden. you? A marketing. I, I say agent? devilishly. I've probably said devilishly on this podcast many times. No, devilishly. Dervishly. Dervish. Dervishly. Dervish. Dervish. Dervishly. Okay, I got you. I got you. Dervish deliciously. So I take you been playing some Mario this week. Yeah, I've been playing a little bit of Mario. We talked about it last time. Mm-hmm. I actually haven't had a whole lot of time this week to play anything. Which yeah, is sad, because I have Horizon Zero Dawn finally downloaded. I had to re-download the whole game. I think I told you this. Yeah. I had to re-download the whole game because I forgot I didn't have it. So I downloaded Frozen Wilds. I was like, let's go. And I was like, you don't have the application for this. I was like, fuck. Yeah, but share how fast that game downloaded, because this is crazy to me. Oh, yeah, it was 40 gigs in about an hour. That's insane. You have a great internet connection. Yeah, ladies love me for it. <laughs> so you put that in your Tinder profile. Hey, I'm Chad. My internet connection's awesome. Come That's on all over. Yeah. Bring your phone and your game console. <laughs> Connect to my Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's actually a hardwired connection, so. Ah, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. That probably helps. Yeah, I use the Wi-Fi connections because I'm happy with that speed, even though it's terrible my my place. It's like <laughs> I downloaded. After you just told me it took 36 hours to download. I, w- I was just gonna say, yeah, I was I'm say, happy with that speed. I'm happy with that speed. No, it's frustrating. I what is it? I downloaded like Hitman or something like that, or no, it was uh, when I downloaded um, uh, Last of Us because we're gonna replay Last of Us. Was it, it Last of Us or was it Hitman? And I wish you would. No, it was it was Last of Us. It was truth. Last of Us. I'm telling you the truth now. I've Why lied in the lie? past, Chad. But I'm telling the truth right now. 36 hours to download The Last of Us, which is terrible because it's 50 gigs or something like that. Mm. 36 times slower than your connection. Yeah. Yeah. Not I great. got a hot, good-ass connection. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, yeah, I've, been, uh, I've got, like, what, two, you know, 300, I have 290 moons, but I've collected 33 without turning them into the Odyssey yet in the Sand Kingdom. Yeah. So that's what? 323. Yeah, about there. About so there. So I've got about a third of the moons. God damn it, I just spelled trail mix all over the floor. <laughs> all right, there's going to be trail mix on the floor for the next hundred years. Yeah, you're recording a podcast. You can't just stop recording that to clean I've up I've got trail a mix. third of the moons, and I've only bought like 15 moons. So you bought more moons than I have already, so you can't mm-hmm. be mad at me anymore for that. Mm-hmm. No, you told me you had 340,000 no. moons. That, and that's most of true. those are bought because you can only collect like 750. Uh, you're wrong. You can collect 883 moons. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Which is... See? So you bought the rest of those 300-something thousand Dude, moons. Dude, if I, if I bought 300,000 moons, I would have been playing Mario way too much. Or... Taking too long. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. There's a story of a guy who 100%ed Mario completely in 17 hours. That's We'll talk insane. about that in our news. That's honestly ridiculous. That's... I love that game, but that's a waste of 17 hours. <laughs> also, one sitting. Yeah, I figured. I figured. Because that um, game is so big, you, there's no room for a break to beat it in that amount of time. It also sucks the fun out of it. Uh, so have you so found... have you been playing? Nothing. Oh, no. Nothing let's, at all. let's continue talking about Mario. If you've got something to talk about Mario, have you found question mark what? No, I was going to say, have you found um, any like change in the post-game? Like, what do you like about the post-game versus the main game? Um, I'm enjoying going back... Cause I, 
in the main game, I just wanted to main like streamline all the way through it, mm -hmm. um, just to get to like all the story, quote unquote. Yeah. See, like all the big things the game has to have to offer before I came back and like really started digging with a fine tooth comb. Um, and again, I don't want to go into spoilers because we are going to do a spoiler talk next week of all the cool shit in Mario. But what I love is that there is so much more than even. I mean, obviously, some extra stuff unlocks post game that you wouldn't yeah. been able to find before you beat it. But yeah, there's so much more hiding in there than ever appeared on the surface at first which is totally pretty amazing yeah there are just you'll turn a corner and there's a moon i don't think i've ever turned a corner in that game you never turned a corner you just walk straight the entire time yeah. it's a miracle you even beat the game no i actually did go through and i played it uh i beat it with like a fine-tuned comb like going through everything trying to find everything i could and i still haven't found everything in the game but i did go back and just did the minimal amount of moons i possibly could just to kind of see what that looks like Wait, and you started it, the game again? Well, you can actually have multiple saves. So, yes? Yes. Wow. I just wanted to see what it was like okay. to go through the game okay. with no, no, just okay. the minimal amount of moons. This shouldn't be a surprise. I love playing no, games I, in different ways. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry that I was surprised by that. <laughs> it, it takes no time at all to beat that game with minimal effort. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I specifically you only moons, did. Right? Right no, I actually I specifically collected as little coins as possible, which surprisingly, after like adamantly trying not to collect coins and only collecting coins when I really didn't have another choice, I got like two hundred and something coins by the end of the game. Nice, which is and still not a lot compared to what you get if you're going for coins, but it was more than I thought. It was only like one hundred and twenty three, one hundred and twenty four moons to like beat the game. Yeah. Which I guess kind of is good parallel, because that's about as many moons as, as there are in total in Mario 64. And I think Mario Sunshine only has a little bit more than that. And that was like total stars in Mario 64. You yeah. You only have like 75 or 80 or something like that to beat mm -hmm. the game. And this is the total amount just to beat, just to get to the end. Yeah, yeah. Not the total amount in the game, which is obviously like eight times more than that. Yeah. So. Titties. Yeah, but we'll get more in depth with, with Mario odyssey later on we'll keep saying that every week too but i swear we're gonna do it next week just because i want to play just a titty bit more yeah you really gotta unlock use the um post -game and this is a yeah the, this is kind of a spoiler here but like you, you really gotta get those extra post game only moons yeah to really get an idea of like what the post game is really like yeah 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 so yeah because yeah, yeah. that's what i really that's what i want to hear your your thoughts about holden de poop face what games yes. have you been playing this week that is all. I have not had much time to play games, so that is all. I played a little bit of uh, Super Metroid, which we'll be also talking mm, about. Remember, that's our game this month. That's our game this month. Everybody so, play it and then enjoy your talk back with us at the end of the month. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a great game, but we will get into that at the end of the month. But that's all I got. So, do you want to jump into the news early, or do you yeah, want to let's keep jump into talking the news. about stuff? Since we're talking about Mario, I just wanted to expand a little bit more on this. The speedrunning Mario Odyssey is a thing now. Obviously, because speedrunning any game is awesome. And oh, this is a new story. Yeah, new story. I mean, I don't know. So, a, a thing that I read that I thought was interesting. I don't know if we can call it a news story. Breaking news. But uh, speedrunning Mario Odyssey was is like a thing where you find ways. Most of the time, speedrunning involves like breaking the game or not playing it as it was intended or finding ways to skip through things or shit like that. Which this game is very well suited for speedrunners. Um, yeah, so you can like skip bosses or skip entire world sometimes, but there's a guy who is, who has played the entire game in one sitting, 17 hours, um, and he sat there nonstop playing this game, collecting every moon, uh, collecting every single soundtrack, every single costume and outfit. Jeez. It was, yeah, s insane, but that's See, pretty I cool that there's literally just 17 hours of content. So if it takes you more than that to beat the game, you're a loser. I put far more than 17 hours in the game and have not come close to finding everything. Yeah, that's impressive because some of the moons are very well hidden. So that's that's impressive. Yeah. There are some moons that I like there are these hint puzzle moons. They give you a picture and they're like, yep. I mean, decipher this picture. Oh, some of them are really easy. Some of them I I couldn't even begin to guess at what they're talking about. Yeah. So that's kudos to that guy. That's pretty impressive. Um, I have some 
bad news. What is some bad news? I don't know. This is pretty new. You might not even know about the story. Did you hear about some of these PSVR delays? I did. I did. Do you want to? Do you want to go into that? Because it probably means sure, more to yeah. you than it does to me. So the actually the two that I I only know of two, and they were both super massive games. Yep. Which is the developer of Until Dawn, which was a super awesome game. Very good game. I will I will second that. Yeah. They had for development, supposed to be released this month, was mm-hmm. The Inpatient, which is a prequel by like 40 years to The Inpatient. And Bravo Teen, which is supposed to be a horror, not a horror shooter, just a regular old shooter, I think. Um, both of those have been delayed January 23rd, I believe, for yep. Inpatient and... What was it? Something sometime in March for Bravo Team. Uh, I have it in front of me right now, and it is March the sixth yep. for us in the United States of America, and for those in the European Union, it is March seventh. European Union. What about those for the UK who are no longer part of the European Union thanks to Brexit? I think they're still <clears throat> part of the European Union technically, but okay. they're phasing out of it. So will they we'll be part of it by now. March sixth? Uh, that I don't have the information. Do you on. think they just don't get the game after that? <laughs> or do, do they have a different release date? No products ever get shipped to the to UK. <laughs> Sorry, ever. we're only releasing our game for they, the They EU. have to make a new Nintendo of UK and Sony of UK <laughs> <laughs> to get those. That's upsetting. But I guess game delays aren't really ever bad news. All it really yeah. means is we're making the game better for you guys. And to be quite honest, I've got enough to play. Yeah. I mean, as soon as I'm done like binging through Mario, I haven't even had a chance to start Horizon, which I'm like... My penis twinging, trying to think about not playing this game chad's playing to end this podcast in five minutes so we can go and play horizon zero dawn uh, yep yeah frozen wilds and uh so yeah then we've got wolfenstein that i want to get as soon as all of that's done oh so, yeah i've got stuff to play hidden agenda i have i'm just waiting for my roommate to get back from vacation so we can all play it yeah i i, I really want to play wolfenstein but because it's coming to switch and because doom apparently plays very well on switch yeah I'm super prepared to wait for Wolfenstein on the Switch. Let's talk about Doom on Switch. Do you have any stories about that? I mean, I've just read some reviews and some impressions and things like that and and watched some stuff. It's supposed to be great. How exciting is that? That's very exciting. I mean, they they say there are clear visual differences between the PS4, PC, Xbox One version and the Switch version. But it plays identically. There is, I mean, minus the snap map features not being included, which apparently is more because, and this is... Bethesda saying this, just no one used those features. Sure. It wasn't worth putting the money in to, to bring those over. That's great. That's awesome for them. Yeah. But it's, it it's runs still, really well. It still runs at 30 frames a second versus the 60, which I guess was yeah. helpful and that they could cut that back. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of the things I was reading was it doesn't matter that everything, like the textures, if you stop and look at things up close, like obviously, yeah, that's a dumbed down version of like yeah. a box or some piping that was going through a wall or things like that. But in that game, you don't ever stop to take a look at the environment. Yeah. You played the game, haven't you? I played the demo for the game. Okay, yeah. It is so fast-paced. If you're looking at textures, you're going to die. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you're playing just, that game wrong. Exactly, you're playing that game wrong. So that's that's really cool news. I'm not going to – I much as I really want to get it, I'm not going to because I already have it on my PlayStation 4. I yeah. have the ability to play that game. But I will now wait for Wolfenstein. This is a great sign for third-party developers. Yeah. It also, just it's a great sign for Nintendo because it means the Switch is obviously not as powerful as the current generation consoles, but it's powerful enough to to get some of those games. Yeah. Doom was one of those games where like that that will never come to the Switch. That'll never be able to handle uh, be able to be handled by the Switch. And here we are. Yeah. So that's great news. Not Look really, at that. Yeah. So EA can suck it when they say, oh, we had to release a truncated version of FIFA and you can't play against friends and shit like that because of the Switch just can't handle it. Like, Yeah, not true. Well, you're just not trying hard enough, EA. Yep. That's one thing, actually, that's one thing to note. Bethesda, not to put any other developers down, but Bethesda is known for having a very high caliber of of developers on their team. Yeah. Minus the, the technical issues in the Skyrim games and the Fallout games. PlayStation. Yeah, but like Dishonored, Doom... Every other game I've heard from them, really solid, technically yeah. speaking. Solid like my cock. Speaking of EA, since we just brought that up. EA. EA. That's right. <laughs> We're all been pronouncing it wrong. It's EA. EA. EA recently uh, bought Respawn, or Respawn, as <laughs> more commonly up. known. <laughs> Shut up. Respawn. <laughs> they bought them for $455 million and surprisingly yep. also confirmed a new Titanfall game as part of the acquisition. Yeah, that was actually kind of surprising to me. I, th- I thought for yeah. sure that was going to be the end of the Titanfall franchise. Well, because the second game did not perform 
as well. Well, I mean, it got some praise for us from a lot of outlets for it. I'm not talking critically. Content, critically, but great. exactly. Yeah, S- sales. It, it was did not sell well. Yeah, but here's the thing. Especially since that was the first one that went multi-platform, and it didn't quite sell as well as I think it didn't quite sell as well yeah. as the original, which was only on Xbox. Well, original is also the only good exclusive on the Xbox One at the time. Right. It that it like, came out. That was their big deal. And to be fair, I'm not a big first-person shooter fan, as I've said on this uh, here before, but that game looked fun. It did look cool. Yeah. But here's here's my thing. I think EA is doing this because it is a game ripe for game of service. Yeah, absolutely. This this game has game of service written all over it, which I don't know if you've been painted to the news recently. It's kind of EA's thing now. Yep. That's how players want to play, apparently. So Speaking that's of that game of service and how that ties into EA's Ooh, Star Wars thing. segue. Yeah. Part of that deal is they actually have... They had, had contracted out Respawn to do a Star Wars game. Yes. Which turns out is a third-person action-adventure game. Um, wonder how that's going to go and, now. Well, rumors, rumors are that they saw how work was coming on Respawn's game. And they thought, wow, that's actually looking a lot better than Visceral's game was, and it's a lot less money to keep Respawn up because they don't, they're not living in oh. San Francisco. Like, people so are pissed we don't have this Visceral. third-person Star Wars game coming out. Let's just give them something. Yeah, we might as well just buy Respawn because their game is great. Interesting. And they're a good developer, too. So Yeah, they're a good developer. That was, I think it was a smart purchase because $455 million might be a lot of money to you and me. Not a lot to yeah. a big company like EA. Like EA. EA. <laughs> cool deal i can't wait to see what they do yeah absolutely um so hey actually I, w- I have something while we're on yeah. that topic yeah yeah go for it star mine wars was totally off center so star wars that? battlefront 2 mm-hmm. there's an ep- uh, article up on kotaku right now where oh and there's been an update since i read it oh my an gosh update at seven okay an update tell your story five minutes ago and then read the update so I will the, tell you what to do. The thing, always. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The thing is, the title of the article is Unlocking Heroes in Star Wars Battlefront 2 could take a long time. So those who have EA, what do they call it? EA Access? Uh, you're pronouncing that wrong. I'm sorry. EA. EA yep, Access. Thank you. Thank you, you can play the game early, a week early on Xbox. Yep. So people That's are already playing this game. And apparently the kind of the biggest people, to, characters to unlock like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader to earn them. Uh, to earn enough credits to unlock them, the 60,000 credits, based on, like, the rate you're able to earn credits right now, that would take about 40 hours for each character. Holy crap. To earn enough credits to unlock Luke Skywalker. Unless someone figures out how to do it in 17 hours. Yep. And those, then you got, people, like, man, they like even run. Leia and Chewbacca are 40,000 credits each, which would be, you know, somewhere in the in the late, like high 30. 20, early 30s. Yeah. Like... That's a uh, that's a long time. To, that's basically why that people is. are playing this game too, right? To play as these really cool, awesome Star Wars it's, characters. That they but love. here's the: Can you do anything? This is just me asking a question, not trying to yep. throw accusations. Can you do anything loot box related to yeah, get those characters you can. faster? That's because what I thought. Because if yeah. you buy loot boxes, some of them have credits in them, but they also always have star cards. And if you get a repeat star card, that automatically gets broken down into more credits for you. Which you can use to buy these characters. Buy more loot boxes, you get your character faster. Yeah, play for 200 hours to unlock all the characters you love, or pay a lot of money to unlock them. As much as I would say, like, you know, I want Luke Skywalker, I'll buy Luke Skywalker, then I'm not going to buy a character. That's great and all. EA would make money off of that. They will make so much more money off of a loot box model like that. Now, hold on. Which is kind of crummy. As of 7 p.m., so as of, I guess that's Eastern time, so as of 45 minutes ago. EA responded with the EA community team took to re- sorry this is on Kotaku the EA, EA community team took to Reddit today to respond to critics about how it takes how it takes to earn stuff in the game yeah that's a an error on their part quote our goal involves creating a compelling progression path for all of our players the comment began there's a lot of content at launch with even more coming via live service and we'll continually adjust our progression mechanics to give players a sense of accomplishment as they explore all of Battlefront 2. <laughs> they continued, Heroes earned through credits, colon. The intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. We select initial values based upon data from the open beta and other adjustments made to the milestone rewards before launch. Among other things, we are looking at average player credit earn rates on a daily basis and we'll be making constant adjustments to ensure that players have challenges that are compelling, rewarding, and of course, attainable via gameplay. So what it sounds like is 
hey, yeah, we've got all this content, do it. But it does look like they're like, hey, listen, we're going to be taking a look at how quickly people earn credits, and if it's going to take you 200 hours to unlock these characters, yeah, we'll make some adjustments. Yeah, we'll make some adjustments. It's like 150 hours instead. We want to offer <laughs> compelling reasons for people to buy our loot boxes. Right now, I've, I have a feeling the whole gaming community right now is looking at EA as guilty until proven innocent. They're like, prove to us that this is not a gross microtransaction-laden game. Yeah. And then when they finally do, they're like, cool, maybe we'll trust you with your next project. Well, speaking of gross microtransaction-laden games. Yes. Apparently Excellent. there's a new Zelda game coming out. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> um, it's it totally speculation. There's no actual confirmation of a new Zelda game coming out. But the guys, Grezzo, who did the uh, remakes or remasters of... Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time for the 3DS Mm -hmm. have released a job posting, an emergency development uh, recruitment opportunity, uh, with a banner reading, Would You Like to Make a Legend Together 2? The reason that people seem to think this is Zelda-related is that they posted the same emergency recruitment uh, uh, posting with Majora's Mask with the tagline of, Would You Like to Make a Legend Together? So they're saying it again, and there's a lot of speculation as to... What this means, a lot of people are saying it's Zelda. Some people are saying it's a Legend of Mana remake, but that's already happening on PlayStation. Yeah, that's already happening. So I doubt that. But that's exciting. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious because they said it's going to be... Do you think it's be... a remake or just a new, like, a 2D or, like, the, the well, smaller so, Zelda game? Some people online are saying it's going to be a 2D game, but they're going to be using Unreal 4 to make the game, which I'm thinking, I don't see the benefit of taking A Link to the Past or something like that, like one of the Game Boy games, which look already really good with sprite based stuff how would you turn that into an unreal 4 game and it maintain that same magic i just don't see it i really think um it's going to be as simple as ocarina of time or majora's mask coming to the switch i mm-hmm. think it's gonna be a switch game unreal 4 does yeah. not run on the 3ds obviously so that's not going to happen so i think it's going to be majora's mask and ocarina of time on this on the uh, switch or which 3d zelda haven't gotten a remake yet is it just the The other one just got sword yeah so the thing is they could be making skyward sword for the switch as well i think that one's the most likely skyward sword on the switch um the my only concern is that it's the game that is least likely to fit the switch in terms of being a handheld game and a TV game. Yeah. If you thought some of the motion controls in Mario and handheld mode are frustrating, swinging a sword in handheld mode in Skyward Sword is going to be extremely frustrating. So maybe they really revamp things and change it up a bit, but it's all rumor. We have no idea. But they've been talking about, and this is this is my total wishful thinking. I have yeah. no idea for sure. Nintendo has given Zelda to third-party developers before, and not the Philips CDI games. Those were crap. No, like uh, Game Capcom. Games, right? Yeah, yeah. Capcom made uh, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, which were actually two of the first Zelda games I ever played, and they're honestly two of the best among the best Zelda games. I think they're really good. So they've given that franchise third party developers before, and what third party developer or really second party developer? Because Grezzo basically only makes Nintendo uh, 3DS games. They know Zelda at this point. They've made two of them. So it'd be really cool if they made a 2D Zelda game on the Switch. I think it'd be very, very cool. We've already gotten a big 3D Zelda game. Let's get a 2D one on there. And Miyamoto, I want to say, like, just before the Switch version of Breath of the Wild came out, was talking to Game Informer and said that there will be a 2D... He basically heavily implied a 2D Zelda game is coming. He seemed to be attributing that... When it was asked, it was, are the people who made Link Between Worlds working on a 2D Zelda game? Yeah. And he says, well, that's possible... Maybe it's Grezzo instead. They're making a 2D Zelda game with the Unreal Engine, and it's going to come to Switch. Oh, or maybe it's like Star Fox 0.5. Oh, that would be awesome, said no one. Said so, nobody. Cool stuff. It's cool stuff. Yeah. It'd be nice. Must be nice. But uh, to continue Hamilton for you guys. I was in <laughs> Hamilton, so just kidding. To continue with uh, Nintendo Switch, I think this is a pretty big story. This is Nintendo Switch Productions being upped again. I know, right? So last time they said we're going to do 1 million units per month. It's going to be upped to 2 million units per month for a total of... <laughs> Sorry, Chad just shows me the Bowser amiibo again. And it's attacking Chad. It's it's horrifying. I hope he's okay. Chad, tell us you're a, okay. This is a very high quality. Amiibo are just like, they're the best toys. 
I, I would beg to differ on that one, but they are high quality. Well, no, the Link one that you got is a piece of trash. It is, but Samus is great. And... Yeah, uh, this the, Bowser the is Midna solid. The Riding and... Wolf Link is awesome. Those are the three that I have. Um, so Nintendo said that in the year 2018, which really means April 2018 to April 2019, they might produce 25 to 30 million Switches. Yeah, that's double their production of this year. Double the production of this year, and that would, if they sold that many units, they would outpace every other console ever released that I can think of. The PS4 got 50 million units last last December. That was three years. This would be two years after release, and they'd have 50 million units. I honestly think they're getting ahead of themselves. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I love my Switch. It's an awesome system. It's probably one of my favorite consoles just because of the hardware and what it can do. But that's really that's really pushing it, man. Like that's I don't know. However, I've contrary to what you think, really believe that Pokemon is coming out next year. Yeah. I really do believe that. And I think this is a sign of that. They need to make sure they have a ton of Switches available for the huge sales that are gonna come for a Pokemon game on the Switch. So they wanna make sure they have units ready for it. Yeah, I think that's a pretty plausible theory. And it's it's like, um, you know, most people are thinking like, oh, there's going to be some kind of hardware revision on this. But since it's a home console, if you look mm -hmm. at the Wii and Wii U, it was just, I mean, until well into their life cycle, they never got like a yeah. An I mean, Wii, there was Wii Mini, model. but that was after the Wii U was already released. Right. Yeah. So I mean, these this is they're just building up their stock forever. Whether or not it sells out, they're just like, hey, we want to have them in stores in case you want to go buy one. We we want to yeah. release. We want to reduce as many hurdles as we can to getting people to mm -hmm. uh, to get these in their homes. And then, yeah, big releases are coming next year. Yeah, because Hopefully. they haven't really talked that much about big releases next year. The only well, ones you really know, they know have about... have to have things up their sleeve. Yeah, well, so here's, here's, my, here's my thinking here, is that they know they're going to have a big release schedule next year, right? Yep. So we already know for a fact that a Fire Emblem game is coming next year. <laughs> of course it is. They announced that a week after the Switch was in, uh, uh, the Switch's January event. I know, and then they so announced like, 100 more Fire Emblem games between then and now. So <laughs> Because that franchise is huge now. Nice. That will sell a lot of units. So yeah. there's, there's a big franchise coming. Pokemon is just my speculation, but I'm pretty convinced if there's going to release that many, po uh, that many Switches in one year, there's going to be a Pokemon game. So you have Pokemon, potentially, right? More likely Animal Crossing is coming out next year as yeah. well. Uh, that's a. I know you don't like Animal Crossing. I I like it. I don't. I'm not. You know, absolutely in love with it. Like a lot of people are. But that's a again a huge franchise. I get they have it, Kirby. They have Yoshi, which are you know those are good franchises, but they're not to those levels. But they also apparently are going to be um, releasing a Pikmin game pretty soon. Biomoto has said that one has been ready for a while now. God, They're just I waiting for the how right many time. Franchises they have. Yeah, they have Pikmin. a ton of franchises. So there's a Pikmin game coming out, Star and I'm Fox? starting to think. Maybe Metroid's coming too. Because why would they announce a Metroid game if there's a ton of other games coming out in 2019 they could have showed off? Why talk about Metroid? They could have just talked about Samus, uh, uh, Samus Returns and said, hey guys, Metroid is coming. Wink, wink, maybe something else is coming in the future too. And left it at that until next year, D3, where they could say Metroid coming out 2019. But they no. didn't do that. So they maybe Metroid's coming next system. year. Maybe Metroid's coming next year. Who? I mean, that's much it's more not. speculation, but... It's not. Who knows? The it's point is, is that they have a lot of really big games coming, and finally, third-party developers are starting to, to release their big games on the Switch as well. So they could be seeing a huge year. I still think 30 million units is too much, but yeah. at least people will be able to go to a store and get one without worrying. Yeah. So potentially big stuff for the Switch. Good on you, Nintendo. Good on you, Nintendo. Anything else for the Switch? I think that's all I have yes. for Nintendo. Yes, uh, we had actually oh, two... Oh, right, there's consoles released this week two consoles released this week two consoles one obviously the xbox one x which we'll get into in a little bit yeah and uh the nintendo switch finally came out of beta and has a video streaming app now <laughs> <laughs> i was so confused for a second and got a full release <laughs> when hulu is now available for nintendo switch in the u.s I'm surprised it was a netflix netflix says we had one ready we're just waiting for we're waiting for nintendo to approve yeah, it right and then hulu's like nah -uh, man we got here first. Now maybe people will use us. <laughs> so our first uh, our first few episodes, there was a big debate. Holden was like, why the fuck do you need Netflix on there? It was like, you don't. no, I mean, it's for a lot of people, this is their home console. They just need the convenience of having a video streaming app on there if, they, if they're using it in document and things like that. So 
I think it's it's no. cool that Hulu is now. And will I use it's it? It's cool. Yeah, probably not. I, yeah, I'll say it. it is cool. I'm, I'm glad not that saying it's, it's there's a cool. feature. It makes it more of a full fed, full fledged console if they're aiming to be that home console market. But yeah, I mean, I can't argue that you on that. It makes it more of a full fledged in in features. It is a cool thing. I can't deny those yeah. points. I will never download Hulu, Hulu to this. I think the majority of people who already have a Switch have a console or some other device that they can watch Hulu on. Like, yep. I don't think it was as ever as big of a deal as a lot of people made it out to be, that it had to be there. It's definitely nice it's there. Like, it's just one less thing people can go, yeah, but the Switch doesn't have, you know, video streaming <laughs> services on it. Like, all right. Yeah, whatever. well, now it has Doom and Hulu, so shut up. That is true. Like, it has two big things that make it a lot more full-fledged, Doom and Hulu. Yep. Now all we need is cloud saves. Yeah, that that's gonna come out with their online service. I I hope at least if they're smart, they'll a do virtual that. console. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think that's gonna be an E three thing next year, but we'll get into predictions at some point. No, we won't. Who told you that? Liar. Not in this episode, but in the future. Um, Speaking hold of the on, future, I have one more thing. Oh my God, Chad! I had a great segue, and you said no. I'm not doing that. Zelda DLC is still coming this year. Yeah, I They're think we're still holding out hope. No, it is. They've now uh, said they've now said it is coming in December. <laughs> yeah, still no date, but oh yeah, it's definitely coming in. Not this month, but there's only one another month that it could be. So it's got to be that one. At this point, though, if they if they if they're saying December, they're not going to come out and be like it's coming out. I mean, in February, like they're not going to push it back that much. You don't know, you but don't they're know. not showing that much about it, which actually has. Yeah, we still really don't even concerned. know what the fuck it is. All all we know it is it is post story content that will feature a new dungeon that's exactly all, and dungeons all, don't oh, even sorry, exist in that game <laughs> I, yeah that's a good point is it going to be a dungeon isn't that weird that we learned be a about beast? what this is before the game even released and that's still all the information we have on it well apparently they didn't start working on it until after the game was released that's i'm crazy. i'm very very curious i'll say honestly morbidly curious about what it's going to be Devilishly. i don't actually have no, not devilishly, because wow. that would imply I'm very excited for it. Mm. I, I, I'm actually not very hopeful. At this point, I'm not very hopeful. I really? think if they had something really cool, they would have been like, they would have dropped their dick in the table and been like, look at this guy, sell the <laughs> DLC. But they didn't do that. They're like, you're not is excited it about asshole Falco coming back? <laughs> if, if that's like their, um, we were going to have be about all four champions, but um, this time we decided to be just also Falco. That's it. <laughs> that's all we're doing. I'm, I'm concerned because they haven't showed anything. Nothing. No. And when they showed Rock Breath of the Wild to begin with, they were like, look at all this stuff. Isn't this all this so great? Nintendo's amazing. We're great. Come on, guys. Love it. They showed way- A lot of people said they showed too much of Breath of the Wild. And now they're showing nothing of the DLC. Yeah. I'm worried. I'm worried. But this is also the first time Nintendo's really handled major DLC before. So maybe they just don't really have a marketing strategy for it. I guess that's kind of true. Yeah. So anyway. Interesting. We will see. Tell me about whatever you were going to segue into before. Pretend we didn't talk about Zelda. Yeah, so I was going to say, speaking of the future. Nice. Good job. <laughs> Ubisoft thinks next console generation is at least it's, two it's years Ubisoft. away. Ubisoft. No, it's Ubi. I say Ubisoft. Ubiquitous software. It's Ubisoft. There is Activision, Ubisoft, and EA. Okay, those are the three major. Activision? Triple- that's, it's Activia, <sighs> the only yogurt scientifically proven to make to- <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis poop. I almost said Tommy Lee Jones. Activia, the developer of Call of Duty, <laughs> owner of Blizzard. So, <clears throat> yeah, so apparently uh, he, uh, the, uh, what was this guy's name? Is Guillemont? Yeah, Guillemont believes that the Guillemot? next generation cons is coming in the next two years. I'm not going to get too much of the speculation around this, but I, I would say if anybody knows when the next generation of consoles is coming, it's probably the guy of the company who always releases day one launch titles on yeah. new generation consoles. He did He did caveat this saying, hey, by the way, this is just wild speculation from our point. I think he knows. Yeah. I think he knows. He has to say that. That way Sony and Microsoft don't get mad at him. Now, this is, this is we don't think we'll hear anything about them for two years, or we don't think we'll see them like be released until two years from now. Let's see. Let's look at what he said. Yeah, let's look at it. What are your oh. thoughts on that, though, while I'm looking at this? I think it's about time. I think so, too. I th- Yeah, I think that PS4's answer to the One X needs to be a big step forward, and that's a, a console generation, so it's not worth taking another kind of middle step there. Whatever it is, it's, it'll be about time for it to come around in two years. Yeah, he says... Uh... 
as Sony Microsoft launches uh, PS4 Pro last year, Microsoft uh, Xbox One X this year, we st- um, we think we still have a minimum of two years in front of us before something new is coming. That we think is legally, I can't really tell you. Right. But he he wouldn't have said that if because this is at a uh, at a um, uh, an earnings call. So yeah, I think it's very likely, and I think the other reason is that a from the beginning, when Sony and Xbox or Sony and Microsoft announced their new consoles, they said this generation is not going to be as long as the last generation. Right. We are at the fourth year. The other ones were eight years long. Two years would put us at six years, which is already on average longer than most console yeah. cycles. And by going to x86 architecture last time, they're able to keep that same architecture. They can still have PS4 games come out after a PS5 comes out. It will still run on a PS5 inherently because it's the same architecture, unless there's something crazy Let's they're hope. doing. Yeah, yeah. I really hope. I, I can't imagine they would go away from x86 at this point. So unless there's a new computing standard that comes out in the next two years, which is far more unlikely. Yep. So I think it's pretty likely to, to happen. But again, I think, and we've talked about this before, I think this is the time where it's a new, quote, console generation. It's right. just, we're releasing beefier consoles. There'll be games that are exclusive to these consoles that aren't able to go backwards, but everything will go forwards. Right. So I think it's pretty likely. Nailed it. You nailed it. I always nail it. it with Holden DePardo. Speaking of new shit. Take two hints at a new entry in Major 2K franchise by March 2019. Ooh. Uh, in addition, so this is from uh, IGN. In addition to Red Dead Redemption 2, Take Two will be launching a new entry in one of 2K's major franchises next fiscal year. They said, quote, looking ahead, we expect fiscal 2019 to be a record breaking year for net bookings and net cash provided by operating activities led by the upcoming launches of Rockstar Games' Red Dead Redemption 2 and a highly anticipated new title from one of 2K's biggest franchises. Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick said in the statement as part of an earnings report. Any ideas? Uh, well, the two speculated are Borderlands. That seems likely, which, considering I mean, they already have, heavily teased that. They, yeah, heavily and they, I think it. they've already like said they, they had a hiring position, like, we're they, working on Borderlands 3 or something like that. It was at like GDC or something like that. They had a 10-minute tech demo of what a Borderlands 3 could look like, right. and they showed a tech demo of Borderlands 3 for the most part. Yep. Yeah. Uh, another one, though, which that is great. speculated is Take-Two also has uh, Bioshock. Oh, which is getting cool. a 10 year anniversary collector's edition released hmm. that has comes like Bioshock a remastered 4K version and a statue and things like that so that could be something that they're trying to revive as well. So I've only played the first one. I liked it. I played it later though, so I didn't really have the You're same impact. You talking about Bioshock? You've only played the first Bioshock? Yeah, I've played the uh, Bioshock Infinite really? at all. Really? Yeah, I want to play it, but I just haven't gotten a chance. Oh, you totally so- should. You're you're a big fan of the franchise. Yeah. Would you rather see this take place in Rapture or what's the second one or I don't count Bioshock 2. I'm really talking about Bioshock Infinite. To me, that's the second Bioshock game. Uh, I mean, I think Bioshock 2 is still very much a part of it, uh, especially Minerva's Den. But Infinite's a bigger sequel, though. It, I would want it to be... The way that Infinite ends leaves it open for it to be anywhere. That's right. I do know how it ends. I, can we talk about spoilers in that? Because that game is old at this point. By gaming standards, that's old. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I guess maybe. Yeah. Okay, I, we'll be I loose mean, about it. They suggest that there are these different realities or something like that, right? Yeah, and everything's linked by these lighthouses. Yeah. So in Bioshock so you, One, yeah. you start with the lighthouse. I got it. Um, it's gonna be Bioshock in space, obviously. Space. They were shock. underwater. They were in the sky, and what's and higher know, than the sky? Space. Didn't or it takes place in Sky High, the <laughs> superhero high school from the Wasn't there a remaster of Disney System movie. Shock 2 that just came out recently too? Or that no, I think they announced it. I don't think it came out, but there is a new System Shock game apparently being worked on. That's basically Bioshock in space for people who don't know. Huh. Huh 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 huh. huh that huh, is interesting huh. though, yeah. That's yeah. that's cool. I would bet my money more on Bioshock. Because I think that's I mean, a franchise already, people have already been know yearning. That, that Borderlands is in the in the works, basically. Yeah. It is all but confirmed Borderlands is coming at some point. We just don't know whether that is the title they're talking about for 2019. Yeah. Which would be technically April 2018 to April mm-hmm. 2019. That's and they the keep year being works. very careful with Borderlands saying it's not anytime soon. But I can see them surprising and being like, by the way, guys, Bioshock. And it'd be like this big, you know, holy crap, Bioshock was behind this whole time. Yeah. 
I can see that. I can see that. Very As a speculation. Interesting. Well, there's another big game coming out. Oh. That was announced. Yeah. I'm very excited about this one. Yeah. Uh, so there's all the stuff with IO Interactive leaving Square Enix. And now they've said they're working on a new Hitman game. And I couldn't uh, be happier. So but that's I, how that I forgot how that ended, whether they retain the rights to Hitman or not. They do. Yeah, they retain yeah. The, the rights to, to Hitman. And he says they're making great progress and promises exciting new features and some franchise firsts. I'm really excited. Oh, I bet you're going to get to kill people underwater. <laughs> They're they're gonna do the water temple. Everybody and... knows the best levels are all underwater. So some there are some good water in... levels. No, there all are fucking some... water levels suck. There is a Mario Kingdom that's pretty good as a water level. Mario Kingdom, oh, in Odyssey, there you a go. kingdom in Mario Odyssey that's water. That's good. You're in Mario Kingdom Odyssey water. That's, good. that's not even uh, nearly percent oh anywhere God. true. I just stumbled on that said Is that not percent anywhere near true? So Hitman might be coming back. Yeah, they said they're going to talk about it in 2018. Nice, 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 nice. I'm nice. excited. I, I love the Hitman franchise. I think it's a really fun, clever franchise. I love killing people. What can I say? Yeah, you're murderous, devilish, dervishishly. Hashish. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> What stories do you got for me, Chad? I got one more before we uh, go and do it. I know that's a lot of. A lot of I shit. have a ton of stories to go still. Really? We only have yeah. one, so I'll get rid of mine and then we'll just listen to you talk for a little bit. Probably the most important story this week: Niantic Labs, creators of Pokemon Go, announced Harry Potter Wizards Unite as their next project, and I'm so fucking stoked because as a Gryffindor, this is something that I need in my life and. I've been thinking, I haven't done it, but I've been thinking recently about stopping playing Pokemon Go. But there's all this new content apparently coming out for it. You're going to miss yeah, out. Yeah, but I've already, I'm already to the point where I don't have any connection to these new Pokemon. I missed yeah. Entei. I, I fought him a bunch, didn't catch him. Suicune I'm not even caring about. And you know, I'm just like, you know what? I think I had my fun with this franchise. To, just to I paint the picture here. Every time Chad and I would go, even to go across the street to Stan's Donuts, yep. he would pull out his phone and the entire way would be catching Pokemon. Yep. Matter of fact, one time he said, hey, Holden, I want to record the podcast with you, but can we go downtown <laughs> so I can catch Articuno? That was important. That was the first <laughs> legendary bird that was ever available. <laughs> and I said, no. Because <laughs> I've never been a big fan of the Pantheus. No, I don't want to give you a hard time. You love a game. That's awesome. I'm not going to yep. make fun of you for that. But I um, love Harry Potter a lot more than I love yeah. Pokemon. So, so Pokemon makes sense as an AR game. Yeah. I, I, the only thing I can imagine with Harry Potter is you're just going to walk down the street and be like, you're a wizard. I duel you. And just like holding your camera and shooting spells at people, which sounds really <laughs> stupid. It can't be that. I don't so, think it's going to because they haven't even figured out how to fucking do multiplayer in Pokemon Go. So there's maybe, no way you're going to have interactive. Maybe they'd rather fail at multiplayer in Harry Potter and then make it to <laughs> Pokemon Go. Maybe that's what they're going to do. I'm just pumped as shit. I assume that they said they're going to be working closely with like inspiration from Ingress, which was the first game that inspired Pokemon Go. And a lot of mm -hmm. Pokemon Go is just reskinned Ingress. Um, I don't know what you're going to – I'm. I, what are you going to – are you catching? What do you? I mean, what the whole point of Pokemon is? Yeah, there are Pokemon all over the world. And you go and you walk and you catch them. They I don't know what kind of the and of, where to find of, them. Of the video Potter game. Way. It's gonna be a fantastic yeah. piece of where to find them. I figured it out. No. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm very it's curious. Specifically, to... Harry Potter: colon, Wizards Unite. Yeah. Wizards Unite to find Fantastic Beasts where to find them, <laughs> which is a terrible title. Yeah, I'm probably not going to play this game because it's just the mobile phone AR, like, travel around experience isn't for me. But you just don't like exercising? No, I don't like moving. <laughs> no, someone, this is such a stupid joke, but someone, I think it was on Reddit or something like that, posted uh, a post and said, uh, and I sent you a picture of this, but I just want everyone else to hear this because I think this is hilarious. I really wish they would make a Pokemon Go game where you could just like oh, sit yeah. at home and, and navigate a virtual world to find the Pokemon instead. And someone just sent them a screenshot of every Pokemon game cover ever <laughs> made. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm curious about this. There's also apparently some new Harry Potter games in general coming out. But I yeah. don't have a story about that. Yeah. So actually, the Harry Potter Wizards Unite is a partnership with WB's new company portkey mm -hmm. which is a harry potter reference that's a great so, name for a 
for a developer yeah, too. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Um, so I hope that means that that's the first of many more Harry Potter games we can see because I would fucking love a fucking Harry Potter virtual reality game where you're waving the wand around and casting spells and shit. God damn, that would be such a cool game. That and lightsabers in VR are the two things that I'm like, why the fuck don't we have this yet? We'll see. We will see. Well, I have four stories left. Okay, go for it. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> Not all these are very huge. We'll do some of the smaller ones first. I'm surprised you actually didn't have one of these on here. Um, just to throw you under the bus. <laughs> 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 How'd you let me down, Chad? Um, Call of Duty World War II launch sales doubled Infinite Warfares. I... I'm kind of upset about this. I was really hoping that Call of Duty would start to go away, but I guess not. So it's sticking around. Hey, if people love a game, all, all power to them. It, yep. I just hate them. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever keeps our medium going, no. I guess. Not true. Not true. I don't hate them. Just that game. Um, the X, I always love these headlines. Xbox Exec defends lineup of exclusives, which I'm always wondering, what is he defending? There aren't any. <laughs> He basically says that um, they have some great, you know, uh, exclusives coming, such as, you know, uh, Forza 7 and how they're excited for Crackdown 3, and that there's more that they were waiting to talk about. Uh, more that we're waiting to talk about until we decide what they are and we yeah. start making them. Yeah, pretty much. Until someone decides to make a game for our system, basically, <laughs> is what it comes down to. Yeah, they're... Pay somebody enough money to not release it elsewhere. The fact that these stories exist just point to how microsoft in the realm of exclusive games is kind of having a hard time yeah i think it's because every developer was like we were going to make a game for you because come on you guys are xbox we thought you were going to do great and you are doing great but ps4 man is doing way better we're going to bring your game to that now yeah i think that's kind of what's happened behind the scenes but of course i don't have any insight on that um speaking of playstation exclusives though death speaking stranding of butts. del toro expects kojima to play uh, to show him gameplay soon. There's already some type of gameplay brewing. There's already some type of gameplay. Oh. Someone was saying, oh, man, I can't wait to finally see the gameplay at uh, PlayStation oh, Experience no. coming oh, no, up. No, I was no, like, no, 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 no. That just means that Guillermo del Toro gets to see it and nobody yeah. else, which means that it's going to be in <laughs> rough shape. And it could be, like, wireframe models. Yeah, but exactly. But it just has, like, the gameplay mechanics. Uh, yeah, exactly. This, this, game, this is... game is far off. Yeah, we this, are not this seeing this. This could be a PlayStation 5 launch title. I'm, I seriously think that. Yeah. Yeah. We will see, though. Um, so there's that news. And then finally, which I think is one of the bigger stories of the, of the week, Telltale Games lays off 20% of its staff as oh, a part yeah. of a company restructure. So essentially, they... It seems like what's happening is they've put out so many games lately... They want to kind of streamline things a little bit and make it so they're releasing less games, but Fewer. of higher quality. Fewer games of higher quality. And I think that's a good thing because that's the number one reason I will not play a Telltale game is I don't think they look very good and they don't play very well either. Yeah. So They, they mentioned that all of the games that we know currently are in development. Mm -hmm. So like Wolf Among Us 2, the last season of Walking Dead... Um, things like that, those are going to stay, those are not canceled by any means. Yeah. Um, but it, I think we, maybe it was like two months ago, three months ago, we talked about how they hired a new CEO from Zynga. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is just like, Hey, we got a new CEO. He comes in he's like taking a look. All right. I've got a good feel for this company. Now I've been here for a couple months. This is how we change it and move forward in a different direction. So yeah. I feel like th this is just the first step of them reinventing rebranding and and hopefully coming out the other end with a yeah better looking engine the games that run better and maybe yeah, i'll start I, playing them again i have no problem with story-based games but if it's if there's honestly no reason those games should run that badly there's very little interaction they can control so much of that experience yeah it's kind of baffling those games don't run that well because you hear it every single review the story is really awesome unfortunately there are lots of glitches and and bugs and like my save was deleted entirely and I had to play the whole story again. Like those just yep. aren't things that you should be dealing with in a game like that. So yep, it'll be good to see, but that's oh, all the news. Oh that I God have. damn it. I dropped my phone <sighs> and now it's in all the trail makes on the ground. <laughs> Is it cracked? Is it broken? I've heard there. I heard those, uh, 
No, I have that gorgeous new iPhone 10, and it's beautiful, and it doesn't crack because I'm a magical. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. Your it's fine. It's still fine. Work? What? Your an emoji still working? Is it okay? It fucking better. <laughs> Hold on, let me try to talk like a a fox real quick. Oh, my passcode is required now. Thanks for dropping it. <laughs> oh. Face ID's broken. Oh, I want face ID. I really want face, face ID. Is, is the tits bananas. Well, while you're figuring out if your an emoji still work, I want to talk about. Uh, yeah, they work. This Xbox One X release, and not so much the release. Yes, stuff, which is generally, are is graphics power, in, r- truly important. Now, Does is that matter? graphics comma power or graphics power? Graphical capabilities. Okay. Graphics okay, power. Okay. Yeah. Graphics are important. Absolutely, but like. Yeah. Uh, is a more powerful system really important? Does it actually like sell more systems? Is it actually something that people really care about? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I believe, um, and I've read a lot of reviews and things like that of the Xbox One X, and it is getting it is it's getting really great reviews as a piece of hardware. Yeah. And it is uh, kind of a, a technical achievement for a home console and pretty incredible at what it can do and the way some of the ga- games run on it. Specifically, they were talking about like Shadow of War and Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed Origins. Gears Witcher of War 3 4. runs at 60 frames per second without any enhancements on yep. CG Project Red's part. Pretty cool. Yep. And I do believe that there are there are games that this is a big deal for. There are games that this makes a difference for. For instance, yep. one of them that you talk about is Doom. And you're yep. like, yeah, the fluidity and how smooth and quick that that Twitch gameplay of that 60 frames per second is mm-hmm. important to that game. Yeah. So when you're able to do that at 4K textures, HDR, all of that kind of stuff, I do think that that makes for certain games a better gaming experience. Yeah. And it's cool that we have a box in our living room that's able to do that nowadays yeah. for a lot of those things at once. And that's a hard thing to argue against. Of course, the more powerful console with proper software written for it. Like, you can have really bad written software, and it does, still runs like crap. Yeah. But, like, if, if these guys make good software, it's going to run better. Of course, that that's a good experience. But when you kind of have these systems that are pretty close to each other, although Xbox One X and PS4 Pro, my understanding, there's a two teraflops difference in, yeah. in performance. So there's a big difference there. But, like, does that actually... Like matter like when a consumer goes into a store and they're thinking, do I want to get the Xbox One S or do I want to get the Xbox One X? Is there going, well, the One X is more powerful. I will definitely be buying that one. Does that ever really happen? Like, on, no, on... I, I think it's, I think it's like, like phones. Yeah. You know, you have a choice between do you want an iPhone Seven, an iPhone Eight, or an iPhone Ten? Mm-hmm. And yeah, they all do a lot of the very same things, but some of them have like a couple of extra tweaks or features that yeah. make it a better overall user experience than mm-hmm. the one before. Whether yeah. it's a slightly upgraded camera, that equates to like better graphics, 4K textures, things like that on your Xbox. So like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's more of a luxury, and it's like, yeah, I could pay for these extra bells and whistles, and it mm-hmm. could make for a slightly better picture or experience. Is it a necessity? No. No. Yeah. It's not. It's nowhere near the bigger jump that it used to be between console generations when mm-hmm. we saw from like 2D to 3D with yeah, Nintendo 64 and things like that and PlayStation. Yeah. But I, I do still think that it is it is something worth exploring and it is something worth continually developing on because yeah, it, it continues to make small adjustments that we can take advantage of and are when you have the proper equipment to take advantage of that with yeah. a, a 4k tv and hdr i think i want to make a I, difference i guess i want to rephrase the question i think it's, i'm thinking a little bit different of a direction which is that like going back to when ps4 and xbox one came out and they were pretty much the same technically but right. the ps4 had a slight bump that allowed it to get to 1080p and the xbox one couldn't like does that ultimately like really make a difference because like I think PS4 is really the only time that I've seen where the more powerful system really has sold better. Because historically speaking, it really yeah. actually hasn't played out that way. PS2 was the best selling of its generation, hands down. GameCube and Xbox were more powerful. The PlayStation 1 sold way better than anything else in its generation, but the N64 was more powerful. The Xbox 360 had a better, you know. Yeah. Um, had a, I would say had a better start. It ended up evening out, but the PS3 was the more powerful system at the time. And even looking at like all the handhelds, like 3DS outsold Vita by a ton. 
Obviously, yeah. the Vita is more powerful. Same with the DS and PSP. PSP was way more powerful than the DS. Didn't matter. DS doubled it in in sales. Same with the Game Boys in the '90s. They outsold everything else, and they were graphically inferior to a pretty huge degree. Yeah, I think continually over the generations, it, the the customer base has spoken that price point is also a huge determining factor in that too. Yeah, and I think that that. I honestly believe is the reason why PS4 is on top this generation because they came out a hundred bucks cheaper. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I think it wasn't the power that brought them no. into it. Yeah, and now that they are established with sixty-seven and a half million shipped units, like that's now oh that's the zeitgeist of this generation. If I get something, PS4 is on everybody's mind. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's the one thing that's going to hurt the Xbox One in the long term is that it is easily the most expensive console in the market currently. Yeah, I think I think it was. Um, uh, financial analyst Michael Pachter uh, was saying that you can buy with like with Black Friday deals, you could buy a PS4 Slim and an Xbox One S with a game included. Together combined, is less than buying an Xbox One X in the game. Yep. Which I think is interesting. I also think that like I don't know. To me, this whole consoles being beefier and getting the more powerful one and look at our specs and how awesome they are. The people who care about specs buy a PC. Like those, and, and I think there's a good reason for that. Like you can say, Hey, this new graphics card came out and I can be on the absolute cutting edge. Right. I'm going to go for the PC. If I like, if I buy the most powerful Xbox or the most powerful PlayStation four PCs already are more powerful than it. And I'm not a PC player to be clear. Like I don't, own a pc i've never gamed on a pc before but if that's what your value is you're gonna get yeah. the p you're gonna get the pc a playstation or an xbox is going to go down in terms of its raw power comparatively to other systems far quicker and they usually yeah. are underpowered compared to where pcs are at that point i mean there's also something to be said though for the simplicity of a home console totally and that's why and I'm a accessibility person. for yeah. especially multiplayer and large families sitting mm-hmm. in a living room versus you can't really do that around a computer yeah i mean so yeah there's something to be said for that aspect of it as well Mm-hmm. But you're right. It is. It's definitely a, a niche. A niche audience. Mm-hmm. It's not the mainstream. It's not something that everybody in the gaming world cares about. Which is why the One S is around and why they expect that to sell a lot more. It's Since it was PlayStation still Four going crazy in, in, in numbers. Yeah, that's a good example too. Is the Switch is quite obviously not as powerful as right as the other consoles. Take Doom as an example, which we talked about earlier. It'll probably still sell very well on the Switch. And the Switch itself is sold like gangbusters. Yep. So I don't think that power is as powerful as it needs to be. But I think there's something to say about when these companies are making their their new system, I can't imagine how tough it is to figure out, okay, well, what's our competitor going to do? Because they have to be in a yeah. ballpark. Like, it can't be like, imagine if, just as, like, sake of argument, the PS4 and the Xbox One came out, and the PS4 was as powerful as the Switch, and the Xbox One was as powerful as it currently is. Like, in that situation, I do think, yeah, the, the Xbox One would sell far yeah. better because it had a huge jump. But that's got to be really hard to gauge. Like, okay, like, where are our competitor? Where, where are they going to be? Yeah. It's got to be very tough. Yeah, it's but. an interesting little discussion. But, of course, yeah, none of it matters if you don't have the games. Exactly. I think it's always the most powerful, the most important part. Yep. That's power. That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> Any other things you want to add to that, Chad? No, I do not want to add anything else to that, Holden. All right, fine. Are there any subscriber interrogatives this week? Let me see. Beep, boop, 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 Pentagon calling. Yes, Mr. Pentagon. Oh, you have a question. Great. Subscriber interrogative number one. Holden, if you could be... Any other game character for a day, what would it be? Any Thank game you, Pentagon. Character for That's a day? amazing. Great question. That's a really tough question. I would have to say the game character who has the best life hands down. Yep. The one that I would want to live. Are you ready for this? No. Probably Nathan Drake. I wasn't ready for that. That's just the coolest life. Come on. Yeah, man. I mean, you get to sit on the couch and play Crash Bandicoot with Elena. Yeah, and, and nothing else happens in the game. That's all that happens in the game. And you get game. to murder thousands of people. Okay, that part's not as cool. But you get and to go to a lot of beautiful locations get to and travel the world. You location uh, situations, and you get shot at a bunch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you get to travel the world. 
Yeah, I wouldn't want to be Mario because the job security is terrible. Like, I feel like he's always in a new career path. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. Yeah, and your hoe keeps going away with some other guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even, no, that's a spoiler. Okay, we'll talk about that in Super Mario next week. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you were going to say, though, yeah. Oh, man. What about you, well, That's a great you... question. Oh, no, the interrogative was just from the Pentagon about you. Oh, okay. It, it was directed towards you. Okay, well. Um... But, I mean, I guess if I were to answer it, maybe <laughs> off the top of my head, um, I don't know. Great, great, great in my great head, point. honestly, right now, I'm, I can't stop thinking, and this makes no sense. I don't know Isaac Clark from Dead Space because I get to shoot my arm off at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I take back my answer. Actually, Jonah has the best life <laughs> as a video game character, like the one Who's where it's that? like every video game's character's got to worry about some completely ridiculous scenario that they kind of get themselves out of. That I would probably die. And like, let's be honest, if I were oh, to yeah. drink, I'd be dead instantly. There's, there's no way. I want to be a character in everybody or everyone's golf, whatever it's called. <laughs> Very low stakes, you know. Did I get the ball in? Oh, I didn't. I want to be a raccoon that goes find apples shirt. and campsite yeah. happy home designer Animal Crossing. That's a game. good point, absolutely. But then you got to farm and like fish all the time, and, and then you got to buy. I like to do that in the tickets. game, but not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gone fishing in real life? It sucks. It's stupid. It's boring, and the fish yeah, always it's gets away. Pretty terrible. I'm just bad at it. Yeah, well, oh, I don't is know there how a way you to be... be good at fishing. Is yeah, there, a no, way there, to... there are people who are like, oh know man, the exact... I'm gonna guess exactly what this fish is hungry for and feed it at that exact, yeah, exact right exactly. time. Shut up, get out. Like, I know this kind of fish is is in uh is in this pond here, and they like this kind of worm. How would you know that? How would you know that? Also, the only way they know that is some guy wrote a book who went to all these different ponds and he put a certain worm on the line, fished it. He goes, <laughs> it must be that they like this kind of worm, and not just that coincidentally. Yep. I'm sure someone will correct us on that because Correlation we get corrections all causation. the time. Yeah. Great. Well, that's this week's episode of Split Screen Gaming Podcast, episode 36. Is it 36 or is it 35? Did I do that whole thing about 36? And it was no, it is one? 36. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Last week I said it was 36 and you said, uh, no, it's 35, so you're better than me. I thought last week you said it was the wrong one and I did say it was the wrong one. From that. I don't know, but uh, give us a listen. Yeah, yeah, it's 36. It's, it's 36. It's 36. Uh, yeah. Share us with your friends. Send us little smooches on Snapchat. Are you on Snapchat? I'm not on Snapchat. No. Don't do it on Snapchat then. Don't I don't do social media. Why would I be on Snapchat? Like, I don't oh do Facebook, God. but I do Snapchat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, my name is Holden DePardo. I only do Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a conversation with someone today about how I never even do text messaging. I barely text, and you can uh, you can see that too. I never text. Oh, I kind of hate text messaging too. Yeah, it's awful. You know what's the worst? When you have a girlfriend who has no friends in the city, so she's just by herself, and then she's laying on her bed with her cat, and she's texting you nonstop, and you already don't like texting, and then you're just like, "Well, I'm going <laughs> to pretend I didn't get these text messages," and then you get in trouble for that, and then your relationship ends. Yep. But That's really, you a... just didn't like her cat. Yeah, her cat was awful. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, gross. Yeah. Yeah. Great. We'll All see right. you guys next week with a Super Mario Odyssey spoiler cast. And a regular episode. And a regular episode. All right, smooches. Bye-bye.